All right, welcome back to the channel. Now, today I'm going to be talking about three signs that indicate why you shouldn't be a business owner. Now, here's the deal. A lot of coaches that I've talked to over the past, I'm going to say three years, right? Because three years ago, I had a lot of content on YouTube. Um, it took kind of a while for, for me to start gaining some traction and, and talking to, to new coaches that are were wanting help with their business. And um, I'd say about th you know three years ago, that's when I started talking to a lot of coaches. Now I talk to coaches every day, right? That's pretty normal part of my day is I talk to coaches that apply for my program or coaches that go through our products and they set up a call with me once they complete the product. Um, so I talk to everybody all the time, all right? And what I've seen is there's really three things that I see that, you know, if you struggle with one of these three things, you shouldn't be in business because if you are in business and you struggle with one of these three things, um, you won't be in business long term, right? And that's the thing I talk about like a lot with people is if you're not going to do it long term, you shouldn't do it at all. Like, what's the point? What's the point of doing something for a year or two years? And then just stopping like that to me is a complete waste of time all right so when we think long term i think being in this industry in this business for 10 plus years all right the way i have right um so with that being said let me go through these three so number one is if you follow what people say on instagram and you watch like these gurus, right? Like not gonna call anyone out because uh, I don't hate on what any of those people do or what they say, like however they wanna make money, that's cool. Like that's zero impact on my personal life, right? But the thing is, is like when you buy into this persona online and you see like, oh, well, I don't have to work that hard and I can create this lifestyle business and I can be on a private jet or I can go sit in this Bugatti like this guy, right? That is not like, that. that's not real business, right? Anybody can portray anything on the internet. If I wanted to right now, I could completely switch my YouTube channel. I can go to the airport and I can buy hours of time, blocks of time on private jets. Uh, I can go to... Uh, Tesla, I can go rent a car for a month um, and shoot a bunch of Instagram videos and portray that I'm this big baller, right? The reason why I don't do that is that that's not how I live in my normal life, <laughs> right? I don't have to prove anything to anybody, right? But the thing is, a lot of, a lot of younger entrepreneurs and, and people who are trying to get in business, they could be in their 30s, 40s, 50s. They see all this stuff online and they think, oh, that would be awesome. Like, I want to achieve that. Um, but they never know how that person got to that point in the first place. And that person could be faking it, right? Most of the time, that person's faking it. And, and you would figure that out if you uh, actually track what that person does over the next 10 years. Like, what are they selling? Are they selling the same product for the next 10 years? Most of those people don't. They pivot when things stop working and they go after a new market. So you have to be very, very careful with that. And this is why I always tell people like you should be limiting the time you spend on social media and you should be focusing on your business, not following what a bunch of other people are doing that don't know you personally, right? So that's one of the signs why you shouldn't be a business owner. Uh, it, it's because there's a lot of glitz and, and glamor on social media. Um, that If that fires you up to start something, that's not a good enough reason to start a business or be in business based off of being inspired by someone that you don't even know, all right? That's number one. Number two, um, you know, this sounds really weird when I say this out loud, but if you watch one of my videos, and this is why sometimes I feel very hesitant talking about the coaches that I work with that are like mega successful because I always feel like, well, if, someone on YouTube that has never talked to me once in their life, if they see this result in this case study, um, like they're gonna think, oh, well, if that person did it, I can do it too. And ultimately my goal is to, to showcase coaches that I work with um, and show the results so people can, can understand like what the potential is. And the reality is there's, 
the there's limitless potential with what you do in your business. But oftentimes people will watch those videos and be like, oh, I want to apply for his program, for my program. And then I'll get on a call with them and I can already tell that like the reason why they want to be in the business is because they saw how much one of, how much money one of my clients is making. They're not doing it for themselves. They're not doing it for kids that they want to work with. They're doing it because they saw someone else's story. And I don't like that, right? Which is why like if you track my YouTube channel, um, I haven't posted a ton of my results with coaches that I work with. If you go on Instagram, you'll see a bunch of results there. Um, but I, I see, you know, people who think, well, if this person can do it, I can do it too. They're actually wrong. Um, and here's why. And I hate saying this, but most people are not cut out to succeed. Like that's just the facts. Like most coaches that get into the business are not going to succeed long term. They might make a quick dollar. That's not what I teach. That's not what I do with coaches that I work with. My goal is to help people create a sustainable business for a long period of time, right? That's way different than having one year where you have a random year and you make $100,000, right? That's nothing in the grand scheme of things, all right? That's nothing. So uh, when you think, oh, this person did it, I could do it too. Well, you don't know their level of discipline. You don't know their level of grit. You don't know uh, how much time they've taken to learn and go through my products and learn sales and learn marketing and troubleshoot things and their level of facing adversity. Like you, you wouldn't know those things about those people because they don't really talk about that in those success stories, right? So if, if you watch one of my uh, videos and you're like, oh, that guy can do it or oh, that girl can do it, I can do it too. Um, I don't want you to think that, right? And that's not a reason to start a business when you see someone else who's doing it. Now, like, it's weird because I will lose customers by me saying that. But the reality is I don't want customers to join my program. I don't want you to join my program if you're just doing it based off of other people's results. And although like having a lot of results, I, I have more results in this industry than any other person on the planet, right? That, that's just straight up, right? And that's not me being arrogant. That's just the truth. Uh, there's no one on the planet at this point uh, who has more results than I do, right? And that's not because of me. That's because of the, the qualified coaches that have gone through my program. They are the ones, they're the reason why the program has great results. Like we have the information, it's all laid out, but they have to go through it. They have to execute. If I had a bunch of people who didn't execute, then I probably wouldn't be making these YouTube videos anymore, <laughs> right? So if you ever think, oh, well, this person did it, I can do it too. You don't know that person. You don't know what they've had to go through to succeed. Um, and that's one of the reasons why sometimes I hold back with those case studies. It's because I don't want to educate people on YouTube to think, oh, well, that person do it, I can do it too. Like, if you're not a serious person in business, if you don't like have the grit and the desire and, and, and the drive to succeed, like my stuff ain't going to help you. <laughs> right? I'll just be straight up. Uh, no one's program would help someone like that. Like, let's just be very clear. Uh, the last one here, this is a huge sign of why someone should not be in business. If you hate sales and you avoid sales, it does not matter if you hire someone to do sales for you, right? Like you will never succeed long term. And it's because like how could you hire someone to do sales for you if you don't understand your product? If you don't really believe in your like product at the highest possible level. And this is why I see all the time coaches who have like a low conviction of their program always do worse. <laughs> Then coaches who like they know their product inside and out. They know how to sell it. They know what to say over a phone call. Uh, they have the different offers in place with what they sell. Like they track their their conversion rate. They have everything on a spreadsheet. They record every call. Like all the stuff I teach coaches, like they have that ironed out, right? And they might not like sales at the beginning, but they enjoy liking sales and they get good at it. And a lot of coaches that are too lazy to learn sales they'll be driven out of this business very quickly. And this is why, like, if you do your research, 
right? If you go online and do your research, you'll see, like right now we're in 2021 when I'm doing this video, you'll see like there's probably a lot of people in your city that do like private training or group training in the sport that you offer. You'll see 10 years from now, there's just gonna be a bunch of new people. Like a lot of people are doing it now are not gonna be doing it in 10 years. And it's because they did not learn sales. That is the thing that puts food on the table. <laughs> and that is the only way to expand your program is you have to get good at that. Like the coaches that I've worked with, the ones who've gotten the best results, uh, like my top three clients right now generate $1.8 million per year combined, right? That's a lot of money. Now I want you to imagine how many sales they're making throughout the year. They're making a lot of sales. They, their sales, they do like between like $3,000 packages uh, up to like $7,000 packages. They're doing like high ticket sales, right? That's common for them at this point, right? And they couldn't do that if they didn't like sales. <laughs> like if they didn't like sales, uh, they couldn't do that and they couldn't teach that to somebody else because they don't have a high conviction in what they're selling, right? But because they do, like they can handle the sales process or they can teach someone their sales process and they can just have it duplicated, right? So if these things don't make sense to you, right, you probably shouldn't be in business. Uh, hopefully, if you're watching this and you do have a business, right, these are three things you, you need to stay away from. Like as far as sales, you need to learn that. Uh, if you watch one of my videos and you're like, oh yeah, I can do that too. Well, if you're not actually putting in work, you're not marketing and selling your program, then like, no, you can't get results like the coaches that I work with. Um, and then the first one, like if you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do is you go to Instagram and you're watching like any guru on there and you're getting so caught up with their life. Think about how much time that's taking away from your business, right? And this is why I always tell coaches, it's very simple. I tell coaches this, every single day, right? The amount of time that you spend on your phone, right? Every minute that you spend on this stupid thing, all right, is a minute away from serving your clients at the highest level. Think about that for a second. Every three, four hours per day that you're on social media, that's three or four hours you could be learning, tweaking, improving, selling, improving your business. Uh, and that's time you can't get back unless you cut it out of your life, all right? And that's what winners do. Win winners aren't on social media consuming anything. They are uh, producing on social media, right? There's a big difference. That's it for today's video. Hopefully this is clear. Hopefully this helps. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. All right, see ya.